Hi, I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks, and today we're making ribs. The ribs we're doing today aren't your barbecue ribs that are cooking for eight hours. These are easy ribs that anyone can do in their home without a grill or a barbecue or a slow cooker. Uh, I'm gonna do these in the oven. And this is something that I use in the restaurant industry a lot. Because whenever you're doing ribs or certain items in the restaurant industry, I would get a 50 pound case of ribs. It wouldn't be just one slab like we have today. So I had to figure out a way to cook these efficiently uh, and to come out with a product that was consistent all the time. So this recipe today, or what we're doing today as far as the technique, is what I used to use in the restaurants in order to get a consistent product and a delicious product. The ingredients we have today are one slab of spare ribs. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to deal with these in a minute. We'll, we'll cut them up and we'll see what they, what they, you know, the parts of them that we get out of it. Uh, I have two teaspoons of smoked paprika, a teaspoon of fresh cracked black pepper, two tablespoons of salt, one tablespoon of brown sugar. It could be dark or light, it doesn't really matter. And we're really not going to uh, brine these or dry brine them or marinate them. This is just gonna be a seasoning mix. And these ribs are meant to go on the grill or you can even saute them in a pan, but they're not smoky except for the smoked paprika. And that just gives it a little smokiness. So again, these are like a nice, simple, easy rib that anyone can do as long as you have an oven. Let's get into it. The first thing we're gonna do is deal with the ribs. Now, I said earlier these are spare ribs. And what are spare ribs? Spare ribs are the ribs that are closest to the belly. So if you hold this up on the side of the animal, up here would be the baby backs, and down here would be the pork belly. Uh, these are pretty much the same cut you would use for St. Louis ribs, except for the fact that St. Louis ribs are cut, these little rib pieces or these little belly pieces are cut off. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. You'll find a piece of cartilage at the end, and basically you just cut down the rib, and you're gonna cut that piece of meat with the cartilage in it uh, off. A lot of times you'll see this piece used for rib tips or, um, in Chinese food, they use it for barbecue boneless ribs. Uh, this is delicious. We're going to use this and we're going to use the ribs as well. But this would be more of a St. Louis cut, uh, whereas uh, if you have the belly portion attached, it's called a spare rib. So let's put these aside and we're going to marinate these. I know a lot of people have an aversion to cutting meat. It's gross, it's, it's, you know, it's sticky and I don't like it. Uh, a lot of places, if you ask the local butcher or the butcher in your supermarket, they'll cut it for you. Uh, but I kind of find like you should get used to it. It's not gross. If it's gross, why are you eating it, right? Like this is something you're gonna put in your belly, in your mouth. Uh, it's not gross, okay? It's something that you gotta do in order to make good food. So this is what we do with the marinade. It's really less of a marinade and more of a, a, a seasoning mix, okay? Uh, I have my kosher salt, my smoked paprika, my black pepper and my brown sugar. And what I do is I just mix these all together. And this is what I'm gonna season my ribs with. So instead of just doing salt, I'm gonna season it with this mixture. Okay, make sure that the brown sugar is all broken up. Now the sugar is there not to really make things sweet, it's just to take away some of that saltiness and balance things out. Um, I have the ribs here and the little belly piece. I'm gonna put this onto a, uh, a cookie sheet and we're gonna season. Just go very generous with the seasoning. I rub it in just a little bit. Right, tap it in, tap it in, turn everything over. Season it on both sides. There's a piece of membrane here that a lot of people will peel off. I'm not too worried about it. This is kind of rough and ready. It's not, uh, nothing fancy here. We're doing it really, really simple. Um, again, this is our easy ribs. It's not the complicated ribs. Uh, make sure everything's seasoned really well. Okay. Use up all that seasoning. And this is where this gets really interesting. It's how we cook the ribs from here that makes it really exciting and interesting. Like I said earlier, you don't need to have a grill or a grill pan for this. I will grill these ribs at the end of this video, no doubt. But you don't need to have it. This is what we're talking about, the method here. And this is one of the key components of that method. 
uh, plastic wrap. I was taught this method by a chef colleague of mine when I was still working in restaurants. This guy named Mike, he was a great guy. Uh, and he taught me this method and it was a way of cooking a lot of ribs without making a huge mess uh, and getting a lot done in a short amount of time. So I have this roll of plastic wrap. Can you see it? Uh, it's a huge roll of plastic wrap. This one I think is uh, 12 inches wide. This cost me about 15 bucks. I go to my restaurant supply store. I buy this and it lasts, this one lasts about a little less than a year. Uh, if you don't have a restaurant supply store, look for restaurant quality plastic wrap because that's what you need. You cannot use saran wrap for this uh, or any uh, like, you know, com not commercial or any like stuff they use in household products. This is a commercial plastic uh, film. This is what you have to use. Uh, this is um, Western plastics. It doesn't have to be this one, but it needs to be a uh, commercial plastic wrap. You know, if you don't have a restaurant supply store, you could probably find this on online and you can buy it online. Uh, but it's important for this technique to use restaurant quality food service film. Uh, the aluminum foil that we're using doesn't matter. You can use any foil that you get. But for the most part, this recipe can't be done without this. So this is our one special thing that you need. If you buy this, you'll be happy. Uh, it's hard to store. I store it in the cabinet above my head and it's big and clunky, but if you have a space for it, it's perfect. It lasts you a long time uh, and it's great quality and it's reasonably priced compared to all the other stuff, okay? If you can't find the food service film, just use foil. Two layers of foil and you're fine. I just want this to be wrapped tightly. So let's get into the method and go from there. So I have my plastic wrap, I'll open her up. I pull out a big sheet of a plastic wrap, enough to cover my ribs. I take my slab of ribs and I put it on the plastic wrap and I wrap my ribs really well, right? So I go pull some out, go all the way over my ribs. You see that? Fold in the sides, get me another piece. I'm gonna wrap it like three times so that I get a nice seal. Oh. Okay, wrap it really good. One more time, so that was like four times. Wrap that, okay, so get it wrapped in the plastic. The food service film really good. I'm gonna do the belly part as well. This I don't need to wrap as many times because it's a little shorter. Okay, so wrap those really well in the plastic wrap. We can get rid of that now. So I have my ribs wrapped really well in plastic and then I get foil. You're gonna need a fair amount of foil for this. Shiny side of foil, dull side of foil, uh, it does not matter. It is just a product of the process. There's always a shiny side and a dull side. So it does not matter what side you use. I wrap my ribs. So I have a little spot there that's not wrapped. I'll get another piece. Okay. And then these go on to a clean rack or clean tray. You cannot do this with just the plastic wrap. If you put the plastic wrap without the foil in the oven, you can have melted plastic. It's not good. But if you wrap this in foil, you're gonna be fine. So, just to recap, we have our ribs that have been seasoned, wrapped in two or three layers of industrial or, or food service plastic wrap or plastic film, and then a couple of layers of foil. I have my oven on at 350, and these go in the oven for an hour and a half. The ribs just came out of the oven. They've been in the oven for about an hour and a half at 350 degrees. You don't want to tear into these now. If we open these up and take the ribs out, the ribs will be uh, shreddy and they'll fall apart if you try and slice them. So what I'm gonna do now is put them in the fridge and let them get chilled. Once they're chilled, we'll come back and I'll show you how to take care of them. The ribs have been in the fridge for two or three hours. They're cold. They're gonna be easier to slice this way. If you slice these hot, they're gonna shred and fall apart. So they've deflated. I'm gonna take the foil off. You can see there's a ton of juice in there and that's good. 
And basically this is what happens. It kind of shrink wraps it. Um, you can save that juice if you want for uh, barbecue sauce or if you want to use it you know, to make a sauce, that's fine. I'm not going to save it today. I got a few paper towels because this can get messy, but you can see the ribs are kind of solid, uh, squeezed in there really well. I'm going to cut this open, right? And then I'm going to take the ribs out. Nice and tender and juicy and delicious. Okay, there, take that out. Take out that belly portion. So what we're going to do now that they're cold is we're going to get some char on them on the grill. Let me slice these first and then we'll put them on the grill. Get some char on them and then we'll taste. So let me give it a quick wipe. I like to take my ribs, turn them upside down and cut them in between the bone this way. Nice slice. This way you can see where you're going to cut. It's a little easier to see upside down. You can see that they're super tender. Okay, there you go. Put it back on my tray. This I'm just going to cut into a couple of slices or four, four kind of chunks. And we're going to head out to the grill, get some nice char on these, and then we're going to taste. We're outside at the grill. I have a, just a regular Weber grill. Um, it's been on for about 20 minutes. I leave it on, I let it get hot, I preheat it. We will do a grilling tips video eventually. We have it in the works. But for now, we just want our grill hot and clean. Make sure you get a brush, wire brush, or uh, something to scrub it off so it's clean. And my ribs are just going on here to get some nice char and grill marks on them and get reheated because we've chilled them. Like I said earlier in the beginning, this isn't a barbecue video, it's a grilling video, but this is the way you do quick and easy ribs. Okay, get them on there. They don't really need any seasoning at this point, just because we've already hit them with plenty of salt and pepper and the rest of our seasoning. I have a plate ready to go, so that when these are done, um, and get nice grill marks on them, I can take them, put them inside, and we can eat them. One of the biggest mistakes people make now is that they start messing around with things. They start moving things around. They get nervous. It's going to stick. It's going to stick. Okay, just leave it alone, right? Uh, and you'll see that it's sticking here right now, but if we give it a little time, it'll unstick itself. So let's close this up. We'll come back when it's ready to turn. Good. I think it's time to take them off. Oh, look at that. See? Look at that. Take them off. We're going to bring them inside. Serve them up. So you'll notice a couple of things I didn't do here. I didn't put any barbecue sauce on them. Um, I did not really season them up anymore. They've been seasoned already. Uh, you can put sauce on these. Uh, this is just a basic method of doing easy and quick ribs. You don't have to have sauce on them. They're gonna be delicious. Uh, shut my grill off. Grab my ribs. Go inside. The ribs are ready. We're gonna give them a taste. I want you to look at a uh, something here, right? Uh, when I pick this rib up, it comes off the bone fairly easy, but it doesn't fall off the bone. That's what I want. I want these ribs to still have some chew to them and some body to them. Let me give it a taste. They're super tender, they're seasoned really great, and uh, they have a little bit of meatiness to them. They're not like falling off the bone like jello, right? So um, I hope you like this video. Um, they aren't barbecue ribs, they're just regular ribs that are put on the grill, uh, and it's a method I've used throughout the years. I'm Chef Frank for Proto Cooks. Give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, tell your friends, I love answering comments. Give me as many comments as you can. Have a good one.